I don't know if you can see the disgust on my face. The Tom was already on the ground. He was down in there. I guess you can figure out what happened next. Gone. Okay, for the next several minutes, we're going to be talking about how to find a ghost. And when I talk about a ghost, I'm always talking about that mature buck. Okay, we're back scouting again. I know this is late preseason. We only got about two weeks left in my home state before the season starts. I'm thinking Kentucky it starts on the 3rd, somewhere around Labor Day weekend. So it's a one week away. So I don't know when the season starts in your state, but we're getting really close. So I'm not going to be pressing into the woods. As, as much as I would. It's like I said before, we need to keep it low impact and not pressure the deer. We don't want to spook the deer before the season opens. But when you're looking for a ghost, there's several ways you can go about it. You know, one way is find the biggest piece of property you can out there, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 acres and uh, hike as far back as you can. Get away from all the pressure. And then you're almost certain to run into older class deers. And when I talk about older class deer, I'm talking about two and a half and above. So that's one way to do it. You know, find a large chunk of property, hike in there a long distance, get off by yourself, get away from all the other hunters and all the other pressure that's in the woods and find you a buck. But at the same time, don't forget this. If the public land starts at the access point or starts at the road where you park and you start hiking in, these bucks are smart. They'll avoid the human pressure coming in those access points. And if a lot of hunters are going in, you know, 1,500 feet, 2,000 feet, you know, a quarter of a mile, whatever, those deer will start hugging the areas that are really close to the access point. So sometimes it's the inconspicuous areas that we just walk by all the time that may hold a big buck. So next time you walk in the access point and you see a group of guys saying, hey, we're going two miles deep, maybe you need to hug the road for a little while. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of bucks that are killed or a lot of bucks that are actually making their home range or the core area right around the access point. So don't forget those areas too. So you can go in as deep as you want into a large chunk of property, get away from the pressure. That's key. I know that will definitely help you potentially or can help you potentially kill a big buck. And then look for those inconspicuous spots. And when I talked about, you know, 40,000 acres and, and above or, you know, 10,000 acres, or whatever, those large tracts of land, don't overlook the small ones, you know, 500 acres. 1,500 acres or 1,000 acres, they can hold mature bucks too. So just think outside the box. Think about doing something different from what you did before. It's just like I've said over and over again. Einstein said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if you want to get a mature deer, think outside the box. Another key element in finding a mature buck or AKA the ghost is find the densest vegetation you can find. something with briars, thickets, undergrowth, vines, weeds, whatever, the nastiest section you can find that no one would want to go in there. And most hunters will absolutely avoid it. I hunt the fringes of that. There's bound to be a big buck bedding in there. And when you look at bedding areas, I just found one right here. There's the hair. White stomach hair. So this definitely was a bed this morning or last night. But dense areas like this can hold big bucks. So the areas that you may have avoided in the past, you may have to start frequenting in the future if you want to get that two and a half and bigger buck. Now, and I'm saying this, and I'm talking in the terms that relate to me and my hunting experience in North Carolina. It's not like it is in some of the states out west, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas. 
you know, we just don't have the caliber of deer that they've got. We've got a lot of hunting pressure here. So when I talk about a two and a half year old mature buck here, you're talking about 80, 90, 100 inch deer. And if you shoot one of those deer in these woods, you've done something. So there's no shame in doing that. Because let me tell you something, all public land isn't the same. I've got a lot of those 80, 90, 100 inch deers on my wall and I wouldn't give any of them away. Okay, I've been looking around, we're talking about finding a ghost. And I come on west side of this really steep ridge. You can see how steep it is up through there. Dense vegetation. Come over to this deadfall. Looks like a lot of locust trees fell here. And look at the size of this bit, buck, this bed. Now, I almost said buck bed. Because in my experience, if you find several beds, especially different sizes, usually doe and her fawns. This one's by itself. So I'm going to ease on out of here. So look for areas, again, that are inaccessible. This is super steep. Most people aren't going to come in here. And it's a nice, cool area. It's on the west side, so it's not getting any morning sun. But a good area for a buck to hold up until winter comes in. Still in here scouting, and I didn't really anticipate finding a bed like that. So I've got my rubber gloves back on to try to prevent any type of scent getting out in this area. It's just we only got about two weeks left to go. But that might be a really good morning hunt there. Be able to slip in there, you know, an hour or so before daylight, get in a tree. Now, this is no pre hang. I'm, I wouldn't go in there and hang a stand. You know, I've already been in there once. I want him to come back. And it'd be the same scenario, go in in the morning and in the dark, put my stand up. You know, I mean, it's, that's a little risky sometimes you put a stand up and you, <laughs> you got too many limbs, you can't shoot. So it's a toss up, but I'd rather do that versus go in again and spook the deer. So remember when you're looking for that mature buck, he can be anywhere, but a lot of times you can eliminate the places that he won't be for sure and then maybe narrowed it down to those other areas that he could be. So, you know, we're talking about large tracts of land, public land that you can get into and get away from other hunters. That's a great way to do it. Just go in and do the virtual scouting like we had discussed before, drop your pins, have some areas of interest to go to, those benches, saddles, edges, dense vegetation. Go to those areas, scout it out, and then, you know, hunt. But you know, the other thing too is, drop those pins and if you can't go scout it maybe it's an out of state hunt then go in afternoon set up sometimes the best opportunities you'll have will be the first time you sit in the stand the first time it's that area is hunted so large tracts of land and then the inconspicuous areas like i said small tracks you know 500 acres and even down to two or 300 acres it doesn't take much for a buck to figure out that he's not getting bothered and he'll he'll stay in that area and then the other areas that are inconspicuous are the ones that are close to the road or close to the access points. You know, just going back over those things again. And then, like I said, these dense areas like this, we've got briars in here that, you know, six, seven feet tall. Those are areas that will hold a big buck because most hunters are not going to go in there. It's like most hunters aren't going to hike a mile or two miles in the woods. So just remember that. And, and one thing we were talking about earlier, you know, the ghost and the definition of a ghost, you know, two and a half, three and a half. You know, a two and a half year old deer in my state or three and a half versus one in the Midwest aren't even comparable, okay? And I don't want you to get any false expectations because a lot of times there's some shows out there if you watch it, you know, I'm, I'm gonna let this 140 walk, I'm gonna let this 150. Are you really kidding me? I mean, there is no way the average hunter is gonna let 140, 150 inch deer go. So I'm gonna give you an example. You know, I've hunted over 30 years here. The biggest buck I've killed on, on this area that I hunt, the public land and the Appalachian Mountains in here, 120 inch deer. Got one glimpse of, I only saw this deer once. Never saw him before. And he was running, had to get him to stop, be able to take a shot. Went out west, went to Illinois a couple of times, passed up a 125 inch deer, should have shot it. Started hunting in Ohio, and then a third of the amount of time killed 150 inch deer in Ohio. So there's no comparison. So if in your state, if an 80 inch eight point comes by and that's a trophy, 
take it. That's what these public lands produce. There are, once in a while, someone will kill what we call a 130, 140 inch giant, you know. They're few and far between. But I've hunted here for over 30 years and I have never seen a Pope and Young while hunting or scouting. And that should tell you something. So I don't want you to get any false expectations. Whatever the, the age deer and the size deer in your area denotes a trophy or whatever a trophy is to you, shoot it and be happy with it. Just don't get any false expectations. You're going to have a 200 inch deer come through because for the last four or five years, you've been passing up 150s. That's, uh, that's not reality for most of us. So we're going to keep at it. We're going to keep going through here and looking for different areas that we can hunt. And I'll give you another clue real quick is fringe areas, borders. And I talked about that just a little bit in that virtual scouting video and it borders private land and they've developed it. Maybe there's agriculture over there. Hunt that fringe. I mean, obviously you can't hunt on the, the private side unless you've got permission, but get close to the border. A lot of times the deer will be going back and forth. Like I said, once they develop it, it's got agriculture over there. Now in the mountains, we don't have any agriculture. Kind of hard to put a plow when it's 45 degrees, you know, or 60. But in different states and different areas, the topography lends itself well to farming. So if that's the case, go in, look at those fringe areas, and you might get a big buck that's going over to the agriculture at night and coming back, and maybe he's bedding in those steep areas or dense areas. Or if you've got an area that's got acorns, you know, red oaks or white oaks, chestnut oak, whatever type of acorn in your area, and they start dropping, and it's adjacent to private land that's really dense and thick, like I said, that might be a good place to find a ghost. Buck doe ratio, most of the time on public land, is skewed heavily in favor of the does. And then if you want to narrow the scope even further, do the buck doe ratio in regards to that you know, two and a half an older age buck. And it gets even worse. You know, it's probably 50 to one, 100 to one in some places. By doing some scouting, you can see acorns are definitely dropping. Finding these all over, I can hear the red oaks just dropping all through, through the woods. And that's a good and bad sign because when you get that much acorns to drop, then it's hard to pinpoint where the deer can be or going to be for that location. But right here on the border now i'm in the appalachian mountains so i'm gonna be over 5,000 feet 5,300 feet in this this one area where i'm at so we got some steep ridges and things like that you know as i said in some of my other videos key on these benches you can see right here this bench that goes <laughs> straight up through there so I'm on the National Forest side. So these areas right here, see how level this bench is? I actually found a few beds around this. And the deer are bed on these upper elevations. They've got the visibility in their favor and then they got the wind direction also. So, you know, looking for mature deer, key on these benches. A lot of time does are come through here and bed down and that's a potential area during a rut where they can come through. But at the same time, and when I go in and find these benches and these little saddles, I'm looking to see what it adjoins, what it connects to. And if it's really dense bedding area, good place to set up. If you got a good food source close by, you know, <laughs> look at this, I'm still in all these red oaks. There's a chestnut, red oak, red oak, another red oak. They're all over and they're definitely dropping. So not only find the benches and saddles, but find what they're adjacent to, find what they're connecting. If it's good bedding, good food sources, you might be in business to find that mature buck. I'll keep walking through here, scout some more areas. Here's another area that you guys can try to find in that ghost buck. Is it does just doesn't matter how far you go in all the time because you can go three miles deep, but then that point three is three miles deep in the woods, it may be real, relatively close to private land. So when you look at your borders, when you do look at your topos, you do your virtual scouting, look for the points that are farthest away from private property, okay? Because you don't know where that buck's home range is gonna be and it's 
more than likely it could be overlapping the public land and the private land. So try to find an area where you got, you know, four or 500 acres potentially where a buck could just, that's his home range. He doesn't go outside of it, you know, maybe during the rut. And it's far enough away, away from the access points and from private land that people can't get to it. So when we talk about, or when I talk about, you know, one, two, three miles deep in national forest, you've got to look in all four directions, north, south, east, and west, basically, and make sure that, you know, it's at least one to two miles in each direction away from potential access points, potential pressure. Because if you're trying to find a buck just based on pressure, you know, it may not always be to your benefit to hike up the main access trail or road in some cases, two or three miles because it may be relatively close to other areas of the private land. And if it's super easy access, then you may not be getting away from other people. So keep those things in mind as you try to find this mature buck. But you can definitely see the deer have been in here. The acorns have been dropping, all these big red oaks, and the deer are on them. Opening day, this would be a really good afternoon stand, feeding area, find some adjacent trails or some dense vegetation coming into it you might be able to catch a buck definitely catch a doe in here